Good morning. Good morning. We have an amazing case today. So okay, tell me all about it. Let me fill you in. So we have a family in Hillsburg. Okay. They've been in the house five years. Mm -hmm. And uh, according to the homeowner, um, the house is about 100 years old, so that's lovely for us. Mm -hmm. So what have their experiences been? All of the members of their family have experienced uh, seeing apparitions. Okay. Full body apparitions, Ooh. sometimes just uh, hands and legs. Okay. Lots of activity while she's sleeping, feeling that there's a presence you know, at the bottom of the bed or somebody standing beside her or staring at her in the night. It sounds like we could have an issue with a prior resident mm -hmm. that may or may not be in the spirit world now. It sounds like they have some drained energy going on. Could be an issue in that regard if we're talking about um, another type of a spirit being or presence in their home. Um, I would like to know a little bit more about the experiences of the kids um, because those, those ones will want to address immediately. Mm -hmm. It sounds like it's, there's a lot of history there as well. Yeah. And so we know that when there's a lot of history, we can just have imprints in the space. Okay, so that sounds like an exciting day for us. A full day of energy, a full day of spirit, just what we love. Yeah, perfect. Okay, let's, let's get go. It. Lynn, Marianne, we are happy to be here, ready to start working. Excellent, welcome. Come in, Thank let me you. take your coats. We are so happy to be here. Thank you for inviting us into your home. I'm so happy you could come. So tell us a little bit about what we're doing here today. So we've moved in here about five years ago and it felt like a really nice, quiet, peaceful, lovely house. We were really delighted um, that we managed to score an amazing deal on a beautiful property in the country. Um, it wasn't long after moving in here that there would be strange things and at first I thought it was just me, something moving um, in the corner of my eye. Um, maybe a touch or a cold breeze. I never really thought anything of it. Um, at first, my daughter used to play upstairs in her room, which How we were really, daughter? she's 10 now, okay. but she was in kindergarten when okay. we first moved here. Um, and we loved it because we were moving from a small space and now she had her own room and she was going up there to play. But within a few months, she stopped going upstairs to play by herself. Mm -hmm. um, and she started wanting us to be upstairs when she was upstairs. Okay. Um, to this day, she won't shower unless somebody is upstairs with her. Things just have progressed and over the last five years we've seen full body spirits. Um, we've seen orbs, we've seen shadows, things have moved in the house. Okay. Um, we've been touched. Okay. Um, I've had things cuddle up against me um, with the sheets squishing down against me and a cold body um, spooning into me. Um, there have been a lot, of, a lot of different things and it hasn't just been me experiencing them. If you were to um, let us know about particular locations within the house or on the property itself, um, are there any that stand out to you in terms of spots or locations that you're most concerned with? We have experienced things everywhere. So you've I've had occurrences outside of the home itself within the land space? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I think the most activity we do get is upstairs um, followed by the dining room and the living room area. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the way we're going to, uh, to go through your home is like this. We usually split up and we each go our separate ways to get information and figure out what's going on. And then we'll kind of come back and have a little bit of a debrief with each other about what we've been experiencing. Um, Mary Ann just kind of goes wandering around the house. I like to um, use dowsing rods. And I don't know if you've ever seen these work. So let me just explain how this is going to happen for me. Um, dowsing rods, I mean, they're the ancient, ancient tool, usually sort of just a stick with a fork in the stick that we can use to find water and things like that. But the way I use dowsing rods is this. My energy has to be clear and I have to go, if you can think of it as, into like a neutral space so that I have no preconceived ideas or um, information about what I'm asking the rods, okay? I'm clear and then I begin to ask the rods questions. 
And so you will see them uh, move in various ways. Um, I am asking different questions, so I don't always expect them to respond the same way. But what I'd like to do is to start at the front of the house where we came in, and I'd just like to kind of proceed through the house and ask questions in each room as we go. And um, if you are, um, if you want to follow me for a bit, um, we can kind of work with the dowsing rods, and Marianne will go off and do her uh, bit, and then and then we'll keep crossing mm -hmm. paths until we. Uh, have some information that we want to share with you and begin to s solve the mystery for you. Excellent. I'm so happy for your help. So my first overall impression as soon as I walk into this space is that um, all of the energy in my body feels like it's plummeting. My um, limbs are a little bit shaky. My knees feel a little bit shaky. I am cold, even though this space is not cold. Um, when you walk into certain places that have a fabulous energy, you walk in and you say, ah, oh, this feels amazing. When I walk into this space, there are many, many things that are dropping me. I feel like I'm plummeting and I feel like I'm cold and shaky, as I mentioned. And it's not just about spirit energy. There are objects in this space, there are energy imprints of lives lived here, some of which feel like they are pulling me down right away. So when the homeowner talks about a drain in energy, I feel that immediately as I walk in here. So when we do this work, we often do a cursory review of all of the rooms within the space before we actually make an attempt to shift energy or make significant contact with the other side. So all that we're doing is walking around and feeling what does this space feel like? What story is it telling us? And when I come into this space right away, I have sort of a flashback in terms of imagery of many, many years ago where I can see food being stored here, potatoes, vegetables, feels like there's a chute coming down from outside. I do get an image of people working down here in what feels like very cold circumstances where we don't have a lot of food to keep us going necessarily for the winter and need to keep stocks um, preserved well. Well, that's interesting. There's a space behind there that just looks like darkness. So because old houses, old homes, carry so much energy and history, I'll often write notes because there will be far too much to remember. So I feel that there is a spirit in this basement area that actually when we come into the space, because we walk in with an abundance of light, um, I just get the sense that there's a retreat into the dark area that we just looked at. It feels like a male spirit energy, it feels like there's some confusion going on there. Sometimes confusion with spirit people relates to not knowing that they've passed or um, not knowing what their options are, or sometimes making a choice to not make a transition. So it feels very much like there's a male energy under here that will need some assistance from us. So let's just do a baseline here and see what we've got. Okay, let's just move over here. Okay, are you seeing this? Okay. This only does this in places that have incredibly high energy fields. I'm not doing anything and, Gosh. okay. And let me just explain, in case you think I'm somehow manipulating these, is that the rods actually sit in little holders that I hold onto. You see, so I can't make them move yeah, with my I'm, fingers. I'm trying to twitch my fingers yeah. and it's not. No, because they're sitting in a little huh. pocket. 
Okay, so um, whatever is causing that is quite strong in here. So let's just make note of that for now and move on through. So we're just going to walk in here now. So definitely drawing my attention back into this corner for some reason. So I like what I like to do is to um, position myself in a number of spots in the room. So okay. I kind of double check that no matter where I stand, the rods are going in, in the same direction. So de something definitely in the corner. And right now I'm just asking general questions. I'm not sort of saying um, good energy, bad energy. That's not the, the issue. The issue is um, where are these pockets of energy? What do they want to show me? and I'm being drawn here so uh, we can sort of narrow things down. Is there anything that either belonged to, uh, you know, in your family, like something, somebody used to own something here? What's the story of some of the items here? Okay, so Santa Claus over there was a gift from my in-laws. Okay. I don't know how long they had it or where they got it from. Okay. Um, I got the candle holders that I really like. <laughs> um, from a garage sale. Okay. The ash bin that's behind the fireplace uh -huh. came with the house. The okay. fireplace was here when we moved in, okay. and the fire pokers were my grandmother's. Okay. 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 So a family connection. Yes. Um, and she's passed. Yes. Okay. So what we can do is we can begin to, by process of elimination, use the rods to say, what is it that you want us to know about this, okay? Okay. And that always gives um, some hints as to, like if grandma's here, she's going to point to the, the, the rod, the okay. fire equipment, right? Um, but I will say that um, garage sale items hold the energy of whoever used to own those items. Oh, but they're so pretty. I know, but when you bring things into your home like this, right, yes. you have to make sure you clear the old energy off before you bring them in. Okay. So if somebody had something going on and they had a bit of a funky energy, you have just now brought those into your surroundings and that funk continues and then your family is, is part of that energy. But I'd like to continue through the house and then if we feel the need to kind of come back here and check on these things individually, we will. Okay. okay? But let's just proceed and see what else is going on. So things are changing for us up here. Just in terms of spirit energy. In the basement we've encountered what feels like a male spirit and I talked a little bit about him already but as soon as I come up the threshold of these stairs I'm walking right into um, a female energy that feels very much resident in this space. It's interesting because the imagery is the same the way I'm seeing it, the way that they're showing it to me is um, looking out of a window out into a cold wintry landscape out there needing to keep warm in this space feels very cold feels very cold up here in general she feels like she would have had to stay home a lot sort of like a housebound feeling um, maybe not a lot of opportunities to go out or for whatever reason you know not well enough to go out feels very housebound which can sometimes um, remain an attachment piece for people when they transition to the other side. If there's something that they were really attached to, sometimes those can be reasons why they don't want to quote unquote go to the light. There's something that feels more comfortable to them um, for whatever re reason, usually in a, some state of confusion or something like that, they'd rather stay with the place that they know really well. is a washroom. I wonder if this was not always a washroom. I feel like there was a bed in this room at some point. And so we will ask and find out if the homeowners know anything about that. 
but this feels very much like a spot where this female energy would have stayed in this home. Okay. So this is interesting. Old furniture can hold tremendous amounts of information and energy, even as it changes hands. And oftentimes that energy feels neutral or good, or positive in some way, but sometimes it doesn't. And so as soon as I feel into this, looks like an antique piece, I immediately feel like I want to clear the energy of this object. It automatically to me feels that it holds um, an energy of, I want to say, a lower quality. And so if you think of it in terms of what someone might feel like, we might be comparing something like feeling wonderful and upbeat and uplifted to sort of just existing. And that's sort of the sense that I get about this. And I feel like there will be some work that we'd like to do on, on this particular piece to one, bring it to a state of energetic neutral. And then in some cases, if we can bring it up even higher. Okay. So as soon as I look at this, I just get the sense immediately that there's sort of like a peekaboo going on from behind there. So in terms of, sometimes we'll have spirit energy. Um, um, certainly it moves the same way you and I move. And so sometimes we'll have a retreat. Um, same as we saw in the basement where I just got the sense that that male energy there would make a retreat there when we come in. I also have the same sense with this female energy up here. So we'll definitely want to do some energy clearing work behind these curtains. Um, it looks to me like this is the room of a little girl. And so taking care of their experiences, if any of their experiences make them feel uncomfortable, those are always at the top of our priority list when we do this work. So we will make a return to this room. So this is the location where the homeowner has commented on feeling like there was a hand coming out from under the bed and feeling like she was being bumped from the bottom of the bed. So interesting that when I came up, I felt a female spirit here, resident in this house. When I come into this room, this feels very masculine to me. And so I want to talk about actually another male spirit here in this space. I want to say that this energy actually feels a little bit different. The other two that we've already encountered to me feel like um, there might be a confusion piece there going on. They're not sure that they are no longer here in form or they aren't sure about what all their options are. This energy feels very different to me. It feels like this spirit energy is aware in that there is conscious choice to, how do you say, be a little bit mischievous. And not so much in a you know malevolent way, but in the way of, I want to say something like boredom, something like, I've gotta do something to fill my time, if you will. So same interesting piece that, you know, closets, when you think about it, they never have the light of day hit them. And when we think about, um, you know, a beautiful ray of sunshine on the face and what that feels like. And if we think about what it feels like to be in a cold, dark area, even just describing it that way, I think that it's easy to understand um, that one quality of light feels better than another. And so the same idea here where I feel that the closet is holding lower, lo lower light, physically, truly, but also in energetic nature. And so I would also want to do something like open the closet doors up more frequently. I'd like to open these blinds more frequently, which I'll get to when we come back to this room, but I'd really like to clear the energy in that closet space as well. Not so much as a spiritual um, entity retreat space as some of the other locations we looked at, more like a catch-all of 
the types of emotions or feelings, um, circumstances, experiences, sort of like a catch-all of all of those yucky type feelings that we have, all of us have in our homes and, and through experiences. And we are in a master bedroom and so it's a really, um, you know, it's a really powerful place for people. And so it feels like this would be like a garbage can of energy in this house, certainly of this room. And so I want to, I feel compelled to clear the energy in that space and also bring it to the homeowner's attention so it's something that they can tend to. Okay, that was a pretty dramatic swing. Okay, I got a lot of stuff here. Okay. But when we moved in, is there there's, some... there's another hole that's yeah, not that there's, one. Yeah, there's like um, another space back there yeah. that's open. Okay. And we don't okay. know why. It looked like it's just chiseled okay. out of... Okay. But so, it's not because of the pipes. It's Okay, so you can't access it. No, because it's kind of... Covered in. Got it. Okay, so let, I'm, what I'm going to ask now is just if that is significant um, to our to our work today, that back area behind there. Okay, and so just so you're aware, when I actually ask a yes/no question, yes is wide open, uh, no is uh, closed. Okay, so that is significant. So let me just ask what's going on in that back space. So I'm seeing um, an older gentleman and um, he looks like he is stacking stones. So he may have been like the original builder um, of, of at least this section. And I will say that there's a there's an energy to that space. It's like um, if you could think of a pocket of energy that's kind of been sealed up, so to speak, like pocketed in. And I want to ask the question, like, why would you why would you have another space but then seal it off? Like that it that feels like an uh, like they're leading me to like that's an odd situation to be in that somebody would like stack up and, and seal something off. So the square footage of the main floor does not match the square footage of the basement at all, does it? Not at all, no. Okay, all right. I've been in other houses like that. There's an odd disconnect um, between upper and lower. Okay, let me just move back into this area just to see what the difference is back here. Lots of low energy stuff in here. Is, is this all... Like, is any of this garage sale stuff, is this... There's, there's a few things. Okay. And a few things that my in-laws gave me and okay. a few things that were my grandmother's. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm asking now about, um, show me the way the energy works in here. Show me how good the energy is. And when they cross, it means this is not a good energy space. Now, obviously, it's a very self-contained space, but basements can be fine. Um, this section, not so much. But basements can also connect to the energy of the land because you're sort of below grade, okay? okay. So sometimes um, it doesn't mean that this particular room is the problem, but it's just that it's registering something on the land that needs to be cleared and we're, we're, we're down below land and that's what it's telling me. I, I know this sounds corny, but I want to say this is where things go to die. Like, is this, you know what I'm saying when, when you don't use stuff for a long time, but you make the decision, like, I can't be bothered to throw it out, so I will just put it here. And it's, it's like the ongoing accumulation of things that you should have cleared out, but you don't bother. Does that make sense for this space? Some things in there, yes. Okay. Not all of it. Yeah. But yeah. some things for sure. Okay. Yeah. It, um, Almost like you knew at the time when you put it here that you should get rid of it. A couple things. Okay, do you yeah. understand? Is yeah. there, does there any, anything come to mind, something that you had that hit about that you wanted to get rid of and didn't? There's, there's a few things, even like the vegetable mill that's behind you or 
the computer monitor that's on the ground. Okay. Yeah, uh -huh. okay. There's also a creepy room behind the furnace. Okay, that's what I was talking about. Like, there's a space that doesn't get used and shouldn't be there and is kind of partly walled up. It's so perfect. It is so creepy. We've got, I think it's the pressure tank is in there, okay. but there's somebody threw some other stuff yeah. in there. Yeah. And it's, um, it's, I don't like to go in this spot. Okay, so that's what they were talking about. This, this walled up area that's got a different energy. Yeah. Um, and I'm still feeling like the old man stacking stones. Do you know, like, are there some, like, old tools in there or something? Like, is there a shovel or something? Like, I feel like there's something uh, that wouldn't have been the last owner, but, like, way before them. I don't think we've ever gone, gone in. in there. Okay. Because I think there's some glass and stuff okay. on the ground, so okay. we just haven't. Okay. It's just the creepy dark. It is creepy dark. Yeah. There's just another weird, like, doorway thing happening here. Okay, so some odd energy coming. Um, let me just ask if it's this before. I'm more drawn to the door that it's kind of like the door downstairs, right? It's the door to nowhere. It we're leads to a deck and we've never gone on the deck since we moved here. Okay, yeah, it's yeah. like it, like downstairs, right? It's yeah. a door that goes to yeah. uh, no place. Okay, so they're not feeling the, the wardrobe itself. Is something in there? Uh, yeah, so let's just... Um, I use this stuff. Okay, let's just see. No, so I ask about, is, is there something inside here that needs our attention? And the answer is no. So it's the actual wardrobe. So where did that come from? It's my grandmother's. Oh. Same grandmother? Yeah. Okay. It was more used by my grandmother, not my great-grandmother. Mm -hmm. But okay. she was given this as a gift from someone from okay. what I understand okay so again that same family line coming in right and this is obviously your daughter's room so let's see okay so just an odd energy and this is the room she doesn't want to play in anymore no nope, she doesn't want to play in here the, anymore. but she agrees to sleep in at night most nights okay um, for a long time she was sleeping in our bed um, after we moved and every once in a while she still tries to climb into bed with us actually um, earlier this week she came into our room in the middle of the night okay. so let me just ask I have to do it in parts because I asked is does grandma come in um, into this space with her okay and the answer was a, a wide yes but I need to be more specific now because we've got at least three older ladies oh, who are occupying space in your house. So we've got grandma, great grandmother, and little old lady in the chair. So let's just ask about little old lady in chair. Okay, so yes, little old lady in chair comes in. Now, now I'll ask more, but it, it feels um, benevolent. It feels like that energy might come in like kind of tuck her in kind of thing you know um but if you don't know the difference and she just feels energy it would just be a weird energy in her space little old frail lady uh-huh could she have the ability of making my daughter worry more oh absolutely because her energy is one of worry and concern absolutely she's that's the, the first word okay. was like she's fretting right so any um, energy connection you would have with little old lady would make you worried. Okay, so daughter's more worried. This part of the house feels um, unoccupied. Does that make sense to you? Like it feels energetically like lonely up here in this space as if I'm far away from everything else. Um, like the furthest point away from activity. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And it's like, like I feel like she feels like she's being sent to an outpost. Like if you said go to your room and play, I'm being banished to some outpost to be there all by myself. It doesn't energetically feel like she can connect in with the rest of the family when she's here. 
And I will say this too, despite all the girly stuff, despite the lovely dollhouse and the toys and everything else, um, energetically, she has not claimed this space. You understand what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't feel like she's claimed it. This is my space. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Um, we can work on helping her develop a way to claim the space, okay? If, he, if it feels like it's more her, she'll be more likely to be here, okay? It's like you can move furniture into a room, but it doesn't mean it's settled, right? It doesn't okay. mean it's really occupied. And her space feels like that. It's like a, like you might go in and sleep in a hotel room, but you don't feel like it's yours. Okay. okay. That's the way it feels to me, that her relationship is with this. So we got to kind of reclaim this space for her, okay? Okay. Um, and allow her, I <laughs> my words, be master of her domain or mistress of her domain, okay? So we'll work on that. All right. Okay. Okay, so let's just deal with this well. Okay, just put away from the cupboard so I know where they want to point to. Okay, so your cupboard, as opposed to this, let me just stand in another spot just to make sure that that's what they want to talk about. What can you think of that would be in there that they might want to make note of? I have some clothing that belong to other people. Okay. I, I looked up because you know in some houses you have like those little attic entrances way? It's right over there. Okay, so there's space there? behind this wall. Okay, what, yeah, what? We don't like, know. If you go up in the attic, apparently you can see that there's a little bit more space around the fireplace than needs to be. Okay. And our home inspector said we can knock out my daughter's closet and build a proper walk-in. Okay. Like there's space back here. We've never looked. I mean, the last time we went up there was with the home inspector. Okay. So I was getting like entrance to attic, which is up here. Yeah. But then there's this like odd little, I don't know if that means anything. Up at the top there, there's a like, see how it's cut out on the right side up there? As if, that you could push in and, and get to that space. This is going to be a fun little adventure. See later. that? Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to spend a minute in, in being quiet here. My head starts to go all like racy. Like, um,. You know, if somebody's laying in bed at night and they're just think, 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 and the mind will not turn off no matter what. Does that make sense for you or your husband? It used to be me a lot. Okay. Um, not lately. Mm -hmm. Probably my husband. He's okay. woken up a few times. And I will explain energy in this way, okay? Like the wood, the mattress, they hold energy for a very long time. So even if that isn't your current state, okay, okay, if there was a time that you were in this bed and that was your state of mind at night, okay, okay that would still be held here. Years of insomnia. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Not a problem anymore, yeah. but years okay. of insomnia. Okay. Yeah. So when we're not when we're not really aware of the energy of our things, okay, they can still impact us. Okay. okay. They still hold that energy. So I, my experience has been this. When I go to sleep in places, I cannot sleep in somebody else's bed because I'm feeling all of that energy. Like I'll wake up in the night, I'm anxious, I'm worried, I'm upset, and it has nothing to do with me. Okay. okay. It's just the energy in the bed. I was in a, sleeping in a bed once and I had excruciating stomach pains and I had to get up and like leave the bed. And... Um, it was a guest bedroom in a friend's house, and uh, I found out that the last guest that had slept in that bed about six months before had to be taken to the hospital with uh, appendicitis yeah. from that bed. So I was picking up on her stomach agony while I was laying in the bed. Okay. Okay? Yeah. So it's still, so again, something else that would be good to clear. Okay? Top to bottom. Let's do the last upstairs room. 
just to do a quick take to see if there's anything that we need to know about. Okay, so interesting. Like I, I will say fairly neutral, okay? It's not great energy, but compared to the other areas in your house where we've got a huge hit, this isn't giving me a hit, okay? okay. So um, your son said he just moved back in a couple of weeks ago. So has this, what was in this space before he moved back in? Um, I had redone it as a meditation room. <laughs> okay, so you'd been working on the energy, and how long had it been a meditation room? Um, just a few months, because okay. it took us a few to, to actually okay. knock so, out the ceiling and Okay, everything. so you understand, though, that you've, when you spend time in meditation, you are shifting the energy of the environment, right? Yeah. So out of your whole house, where these have been going all wacky, this is the one place that's like, ah, okay? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> which is a good sign, which means that you have the ability to shift energy. Okay. okay. Um, and it would be nice if your whole house could feel like this. Okay. That's the goal to make it all feel clear and uh, vibrant. Um, but I love that confirmation. Okay. Let's go downstairs. Okay. So um, the next step is for us to go through some of the key points. Um, that we found. So we're going to listen to Marianne talk about her little walkabout first okay. um, and compare notes with what we experienced. Yes. And then the most important thing for you is how do we help you, right? Now that we've identified these little pockets of um, not very high energy, what are we going to do about them? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. You so, say? you know, as soon as I came in the house, I just felt like as an energy being myself, I just plummeted. So, when I think about your experiences with feeling like you're having low energy, like I've slept, I've eaten, why do I still feel this way? As soon as I walk into this space, I immediately feel that. You know, one of the spaces that I visited that we, we of course, worked separately on is in the basement. And as soon as I walked into that space, um, I became aware of a male energy, a spirit energy in that space. Um, to me, he felt very much like, um, like a laboring individual. Um, he also had me feel like there might be a bit, I, I'm not sure quite the best way to describe it, but something like maybe a learning disability or um, perhaps even an intellectual deficit. Um, in terms of a timeline, he feels quite um, dated to me. I wanna say, you know, probably around the construction time of this house, maybe 100, 120 years ago, something like that. Um, and one of the places that I was immediately drawn to was when I was following his energy, in fact, was I went around the corner and there was a really dark opening into a space. And it felt very much like there was a re retreat of his energy into that space. And when I feel into what the quality of that felt like, it felt pretty low vibration to me. What, something we might say doesn't feel so on the up and up. So that was one interesting piece. I also felt like um, the energy of, of, of the story of this place um, had an air to it about having to gather stocks of food in a really cold winter. And I felt like this individual, this male spirit energy down there, that was part of his role as well to bring in from the fields. And I feel like this used to be part of a larger plot of land um, to bring in stocks of food from the land. And it felt like there was a shoot in the basement, um, not so much like a coal type shoot, although that might be there as well, more like a food filtering shoot. So where a door would open from the outside and fresh food from the land would come through. Um, so that was one of the encounters that I had in the basement there. Um, Can I just say that yeah. it's funny because I we were talking about the little old man in the basement, yes. and I, when I first went downstairs, it was like he was stacking stones, like he was building foundation. Yes, like bringing, labor, yes. bringing the stones in like by wagon yeah, to absolutely. this site. Yeah. But the, the feeling I got was this sense of um, um, having to get things ready. Mm -hmm. Like there was a time element to how much time he had whether it was like before winter or uh, some deadline, right? Yes. That it was like, I need to get this done or yes. we're not going to make it. And that's exactly what I picked up on, that okay. there was a story of winter, a story of cold times coming and we needed to get this done. Yeah. Um, so on point, wonderful. When I made my way upstairs, I immediately became aware of a female spirit energy. Um, as I walked up the stairs, it sort of hit me like a ton of bricks and I felt very cold. Um, I felt a little bit shaky, um, which is just my receptors going off to spirit energy of a particular quality. Um, when I walked up the stairs, I got sort of imagery immediately of a woman looking out a window. Again, looking out to like the cold <laughs> winter out there. I also got the sense that she would have been something like housebound, um, a little more than she might have wanted to be. 
okay? And so there's an energy behind that. Um, when I made my way into the washroom, I did get um, an image that looked like that would have not been a washroom at some point in something like a very small bedroom. I did see a small bed um, as a sort of a historic image of the space. And also this, you know, idea of looking out the window in there. Um, if, to your knowledge, would that have like not been a, a washroom at some point? We've always had that feeling. Okay. Um, we feel so what is my son's room now was probably a washroom. Um, before, when we first moved in, there was actually a venting that you would have in the bathroom, actually in my son's room, okay. and there was a drop ceiling as well, so it was very different for a bedroom. Okay, interesting. So that sort of lines up there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, when I did make my way into um, what I presume is your daughter's room, I did get the sense that as I approached the, the closet, which was sort of drapes that are closed, but that is a space that I would like to clear the energy out of. I feel like not a lot of light hits that space. Um, and in terms of um, spirit energy in this space, I feel like that might be a retreat place as well. And so I'd like to do some work in there. Okay. And finally, a oh, couple of things in the, in the um, hallway upstairs. There's a brown curio with doors that open. Um, I was immediately drawn to that. Um, I did get the sense um, that the piece itself um, has a history that goes along with it that feels like it pulls me down a little bit. And so I want to attempt to clear the energy of that piece, bring it to neutral and higher if we can. But I do feel like it's, it's asking for attention. Um, and I feel like you, as, as you know, the occupants of this space, would feel that in some way. Okay? And do you feel like, does that make sense to you? Have, you? have you had experiences where you thought, I don't know how great this feels? I've always actually kind of liked it because it was my grandmother's, but the okay. story is that it was given to her. Okay. Um, so I keep it and I like it because it has that attachment to my grandmother okay. that I was very close to. Okay, so and that's I, what you I, know about it. Yeah. yeah, that's what I know about well, it. Well, what I picked up on when we were upstairs is that it, it belonged in the family. That's yeah. where it came from in terms of, um, you know, how did it show up in this house? I, and I, I respect loving an heirloom, but I also understand that, and you understand too, that of course objects and, and you know, pieces, furniture, those types of things, they carry a story and sometimes we need to um, spruce that up a bit. So that did, that did come up. We, um, we did think about rehoming it, but I just I couldn't do it. Well, we'll talk about rehoming things in a moment, but in, case, in terms of that piece, um, I feel like a good energy clearing of that um, piece would probably do it well. Um, as I move into the master bedroom, I immediately became aware of a different spirit energy, not the female that we're talking about and not the male that we've encountered in the basement. Okay. It feels very much like a, a different quality of energy. Um, feels like if I talk about era, I want to say more recent than the male energy in the basement. Mm -hmm. um, yes? yes. Same yeah. experience? Okay, great. Um, I also feel like as soon as I looked at the closet in the master bedroom, I feel like this is also like a retreat space for mm -hmm. maybe some non-beneficial energy that can be this world related. So, you know, mm -hmm. our own personal energy, but also other world related. So I'd like to open that up. I'd like to clear the energy in there, put some light in there. Okay. Um, that immediately came to mind. So if we can tell you that just like in the basement, there's that back kind of crawl space, dead zone yes. area between their master bedroom closet and their daughter's closet, yes. there is another dead zone that I was picking up on that's kind of, it's like almost like there's a false wall and there's a space in between those two. Interesting. Yes. Yeah. Interesting that both the master closet and the daughter's closet, they actually back onto each other with a space in between. Yes. Yes. yes and they both had the same quality of energy. Yes. Interesting. Okay. Um, when I come into the living room area, um, I feel the presence of that same male energy from the upstairs room and that leads me to feel like there would have been experiences in the living room by some family members that make you feel a little bit odd or a little bit strange. Um, it feels like there would be like the gathering of family there and that this spirit person from the upstairs is like, I want to be a part of that too and you're going to know that I'm here in some way. Yes. Would that be fair to say that you've had experiences like that in that room there? Yes, we've, uh, my husband actually saw a gentleman walking past the doorway here okay. once. Okay. Um, head to toe solid. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, we're going to do some of our work here and Lynn's going to debrief some of yeah. her things as well. But in a general sense, I also need to note that 
you know, if we listen to what the energy of this space is asking for, there's definitely a call to open blinds, literally let the light in every single day, opening up closet spaces, those types of things. Um, I definitely got a clear sense that there is a need for music to play in this space, often, far more often than is already being played. Okay. Any particular kind of music? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like we're yeah. talking about, you know, high vibration music, whatever that might yeah. look like for you. But, um, and I also got the sense, a very clear sense that after we do this work here today, that there is a need for each of the residents of this space, so you and your family, to also have your personal energy fields cleared. Because we can do all of the work that we'd like to do today. And of course, though, the energy of a space becomes the energy of the people that live in it. And so you've been here having these experiences for some time, which says that you are also holding this energy. And so we would also um, like to see something like a personal energy clearing done for each of you. Okay. Okay. Um, so we have another uh, guest follow us around um, okay. the house today, uh, and this is your great great grandma. Just my great great grandma. Great, great grandma. Okay. okay. So um, as normally happens when I'm using the dowsing rounds, if there are loved ones present that want to make their presence known and sort of say, "Hey, we're with you. We're mm -hmm. on the team," mm -hmm. um, they will start to direct me to um, items that belong to them. Okay. So we went in beside the Christmas tree. The the rods were doing a weird thing, and we narrowed it down to the. Um, Fireplace tools at the back belong to great grandmother. Okay, good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then when we walked up the staircase, there's a bookcase as you'd make the turn. Yes. And uh, she made me stop and look there. And I said, there's the photos in here. And there's a photo, family photo. Anyways, we narrowed it down to, they have a lovely family photo yeah. with her in it. Okay. And it looked to me like it would be like, People sitting, people standing. Um, one of those old cameras that the the guy would look under the cloth mm -hmm. and do the boom that mm -hmm. kind of thing. So if Yolanta um, has time, she might even be able to find that pic for pic yes. for us, which would be lovely. Okay, great. Um, you're right. The the cabinet in the far hallway. <laughs> so she's been following along. Um, her energy feels quite lovely. <coughs> <coughs> Where was the fire? <coughs> the barn was on fire. The barn has been burnt, burnt down. down. I know that feeling. Okay. Take some water. That has happened to us before where we, it's like you're inhaling the carbon monoxide and we can't breathe anymore. Um, so um, we can fill her in on grandma when she comes back. So our role next would be this. You actually asked it to come in to actually clear your house, not just to tell you about all the weird, funky things happening in your house. So there's a couple of things on our roster to do. One is we're going to spend some time and just help um, these three souls. So the old lady upstairs looking at the window, the older gentleman in the basement, and the younger man that Mary, Mary and picked up on that spends some time in the living room with you. Um, we need to help them cross to the other side, okay? There's no reason for them to be here with you. Um, their time has come and gone. Um, their experience should now be elsewhere, okay? So the way we do that is we um, go in energetically and connect into their energy again, and we just help them do the cross, okay? okay. And often what is quite lovely is we see um, some of their loved ones sort of coming to help them cross, um, which is a lovely feeling, but we can't show you what that looks like, okay? So we're going to do that we work. Um, great grandma, I'm sure you would love to have stay yes. with you, right? She is on your support team. Um, I want to say that um, she has helped to, um, as best she can, I want to say counterbalance some of the other energy that's here. We did talk um, briefly, Marianne and I, about how we do feel that the three spirits who have been occupying space with your family, we don't feel like they connect. Um, it's not they're, like they're conspiring in any way. The feeling is almost as if they pass each other and they're not aware of each other's existence. It's like they're on different energy planes, so they're not working together here in any capacity. They're just doing their own thing and not knowing that there's other um, spirits present. Okay. okay. So we'll we'll do the release. 
Um, we also want to spend some time really filling your house with white light, okay? Really changing the energy field. And that's, again, something that we're just sitting, generating energy. And in particular, sending it into those, I just want to call them dead zones, the, the, you know, things behind the walls. Um, a good test will be, at the end of that, if we've cleared those spaces, if I go back into your kitchen and use the dowsing rods again, they shouldn't be all spinny. Okay. okay. So you're good with that. We're going to yep. spend some quiet time. We're going to connect in. We'll see what's going on in terms of fire that is causing Marianne to be choking to death. And um, we'll go back again. I am so relieved. I'm not crazy. Um, this whole time, even with other people saying it, um, in a way I've always felt a little nuts. Um, but having Marianne and Lynn come in and say all of these things that I experienced without knowing anything about them beforehand just gives validation um, to me. And it makes me feel, like, you know, I, I did have some spiritual experiences here and um, maybe I'm not as nuts as, as I thought I was. Ladies, I found that picture that we uh, we were talking about. Oh, this is great grandma? Yes, this is my great grandmother. She's right over here. And these are all her brothers and sisters. Well, she only had the one sister. And that's my, uh, I guess she'd be my great great grandma and my great great grandfather. Oh, wow. lovely. So she's been with us all day walking around. Yes. Right? Oh, yes. that's beautiful. Love that. Thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. So. Um, we just want to kind of give you an update in terms of the work that we did now that we've talked about uh, everything that was going on in your house. Um, I do have to just point out though, this chair has been driving me crazy since I came in. It has a funky energy to it that um, I can't imagine anybody wants to sit in that chair. So where did that come from? Okay, so my son just moved back home two weeks ago and uh, he brought that chair with him. Um, the story, the way I understand it, is it belonged to someone that's related to his girlfriend. Um, she had passed, and my son has inherited um, some of the uh, some of her things, and that's one of them. Okay, interesting. So old lady chair. So basically, what we did is um, we go into the energy of your house, and we are doing this psychically. We're going into um, the spaces that we talked about that needed to be cleared. So we were both pulled to kind of start in the basement, interestingly enough, and then work our way up level by level, okay? And so any beings that were on those levels, mm -hmm. as we got to that level, we helped them to cross to the other side. So from my uh, perspective, starting in the basement, I needed to fill that back uh, scary area with as much light as I could and just really clear that energy out because my feeling was that the elderly man that we talked about in the basement would retreat into that space. He would go hide in there mm -hmm. um, and uh, he would peek out, he would come out, but that was kind of his area. So um, needed to fill that space with light. It almost as if if it's filled with light, then he doesn't want to be in that space any longer. And then I was able to kind of just move him to the other side, move him through the light to the other side. And Marianne can talk about her experiences. But as we went up each level um, in the upstairs, uh, the the lovely lady sitting in the chair. Yes. Um, my image of her crossing was quite beautiful. I felt that um, her husband, there was a male that came and he actually sort of carried her over. Remember I talked about her not having much mobility? Yes. Um, he sort of carried her all wrapped up over. So that was lovely oh. that they could reunite. Yes. When we um, connected in with the other male energy, if you can think of the under the bed male energy yes. that you've had some experiences with. Um, interestingly, the way that it was shown to me was that beneath the bed was sort of what would look like a funnel going downward. Okay. And I want to talk about like a resident spot for this spirit being to, um, to exist within. Okay. And both Lynn and I separately got the sense that this spirit being was, um, would travel so throughout the house, which we already spoke about earlier, certainly coming into the living room, but also the sense that there would be other locations in this area that this spirit being might visit. Yeah, I felt like he, uh, he could travel to other homes close mm -hmm. by so that they might um, have weird things happening that okay. he would uh, 
travel around and then try and infuse himself into activities where the human beings were doing things. Mm -hmm. So it's like if you had Friday night movie night on the couch, the feel was like he might want to join that. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And so an interesting uh, sort of uh, image here is the same as the dark area in the basement where we filled the space with light and sort of a displacement effect happened and the same happened upstairs. But the interesting piece is that when I, um, with this light, compelled this spirit being to come into visibility, the image that was shown to me was sort of like someone um, walking like on a tra trapeze or holding on to sort of like gymnastic rings. So a man's image, much like this. And I want to say that as I'm trying to connect with this energy to communicate and offer assistance, the visual sort of um, display to me was bouncing up and down, um, sort of like on a trapeze bouncing on it. And I thought that's really interesting because some of your experience is that from under the bed, something's been bumping up. Yeah. So um, with some, you know, interesting dialogue and conversation with this spirit being, I'm so happy to let you know that there was a beautiful transition to the light. And both Lynn and I, independent of one another, after, um, after doing this work with this individual, went looking, an additional look mm -hmm. around. Is there any fraction of a soul that has remained here? And we couldn't find anyone. So oh, that good. was um, like beautiful confirmation for us that a transition has happened. A little bit of other work to be done is going to relate to some furniture pieces. There are certain key pieces, mostly the ones that you have brought in from the outside. We've had the discussion about garage sales and auctions mm -hmm. and things like that um, need to be cleared. And anything okay. new coming into your house that isn't brand spanking new needs to be cleared. Okay. 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 I, I, I will sort of leave you with this. There was this beautiful image that was shown of your family here cooking, TV on, kids are here, lights are on, and just a really warm, warm, soft, cozy energy in this space. And I know that it's been years since you've felt that in this space. Um, and so we really feel that the work that we've done today and some of the follow-up work that you're going to do, including work on the land, that this image is really going to represent what your experience is going to be. Oh, so we're so, so happy good. to have been here to work with you mm. and to offer assistance in all the ways that we have today. Yeah. Thank you. It was, it was really an interesting and wonderful experience and yes. I'm so happy you could come out and help me today. Yeah, good. Thank you. Thank you. So one last thing I'd like to do, go back into your kitchen one last time. Just want to use the dowsing rods just to feel that energy and make sure okay. that it's clear. Just really for your benefit to know that, you know, they're opening wide and everything is good, okay? Wonderful. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so let's just do one final check to see if this vortex has changed. Okay, beautiful. So in my world, that means clear, bright energy. Okay? Um, yeah, that's lovely. That's what I would like to see throughout your whole house before we leave. Well, thank you so much, Yolanda, for having us at your home. It was such an honor to work with you today and your great grandma. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. No, really, thank you guys. It feels so You're much welcome. better already. Good. Okay, okay. We're on our way. Thank you. Bye. Another one down, another family helped. I think that this was a great example of how if you want to shift the energy in the space, that you can do it, that it's possible, that people can take back their experience, take back their house, and make it something beautiful that they always wanted it to be. Absolutely, and I, I was so honored as Yolanda walked around the house with me to um, introduce her to her great-grandmother great again. <laughs> I think it was very comforting for her to know yeah. that her spirit team was with her as always. we did this work, Absolutely. and that uh, the other spirits have crossed on, but gra great-grandma remains, yes. and so that's lovely. So, Lovely. on our way to the next adventure, you who knows it. where we'll be next? <laughs>